Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and get our Bibles out. We're, we're talking about the personal work of the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about his personality and aspects. Let's, let's talk about uh, here um, Acts, the only a person, we're still talking about that he's a person. Only a person can perform or ascribe to the Holy Spirit. This is the second line of proof. Now, the first one was personality. The second is only acts ascribed to a person can be, you know, that a person can perform or ascribe to the Holy Spirit. In other words, there are acts that the Holy Spirit performs that only a person can do, and it's ascribed to him. All right? Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We're going to go about, you know, a few verses here. This may not be real long tonight, but we'll just go ahead and get through and, and uh, share this. We're trying to lay a foundation for the year of visitation, manifestation, and demonstration. Yeah. Amen? And, and I tell you, we want, we want to be kind of, kind of geared up by the time Shekinah Glory gets here. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Tap into some things in the Spirit. Amen. Don't want them coming in. We're dragging feet. We want to come in. They're, they're trying to catch up with us. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And this, I'm, I'm really excited about that meeting. It's been about three years or so since they've been with us. And... Um, you know, they're going to be with us two nights here in the church and then one night with our Raymond, Raymond ministers. And uh, I'm just excited about all of that. Hallelujah. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. First Corinthians, Eddie. Not Second Corinthians. Hallelujah. But God hath, well, I hath not seen, ear hath not heard, verse 9. Neither has entered into the heart of man the things God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for his Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit searches. If, if he's not a person, that makes no sense. How can a force search? Or a cosmic cloud or some kind of energy field search? You know? No, the Holy Spirit searches the things of God. And then he reveals them to us. So he, he not only searches, then he reveals them what he finds when he searches. So, but if he's not a person, that makes no sense. It would make no sense to say that the Spirit of God searches if he's not a person. Right, right. Amen? I mean, I come to my house, I don't have electricity running around looking for stuff. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. You know, well, you can have a drone. Yeah, but somebody's sitting behind and running that drone. Yeah. It's not actually the drone doesn't do, it's not doing it on its own. Even if it was on a computer program, somebody told it, made it do it. And it's not, it's not assimilating itself, it's, it's stuff for itself. Okay? It's just relaying information uh, electronically because somebody told it to. No, a person searches. Amen. Look at Revelation chapter 2. So the Holy Spirit searches. So again, these, this next one, this, ne this section we're in right now, many acts that only a person can perform or ascribe to the Holy Spirit. So we're going to read you know, several things that, that the Spirit of God does that only a person can do. All right? Revelation, the second chapter. And the seventh verse. We can really get into some good stuff in Revelation, this first part where he's talking to the seven churches. Um, but we won't. Verse 7, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Amen. The Spirit speaks. He says. Persons speak. Amen. You know, this part, you know, uh, I mean, if you were to say, the only, the only proof I have is that he speaks. Now, but this is part of the overall. He searches, reveals, he speaks. Amen. People speak. A person speaks. Glory to God. Look over, if, if you will, to Galatians, the fourth chapter. Because, verse 6, and because you were sons, or you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. He cries out. The spirit of God cries out. Now, this goes back to emotion. This goes back to, to knowledge, but, you know, emotion, mind, 
you know, will, a purpose, emotion. The, the, that crying out is, is, the reason he cries out is because he has the emotion, the mind. The, remember mind, we tell it emotion, purpose, feelings. He cries out in our hearts, Abba, Father. A person can do that. And a force or an energy can't do that. Amen? So we have him here in these, and so far in three passages, we have the Spirit of God searching, and in conjunction with that revealing. We have the Spirit of God saying, and we have the Spirit of God crying out. You see, these are our acts ascribed to the Holy Spirit that, are, that only a person can perform. Amen? Yeah. Let's, let's look over here in uh, Romans, the 8th chapter. look at um, verse 14 for as many are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God now this is one you know forces don't lead amen verse 15 for we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but that we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father hallelujah uh, verse 16 the spirit is and this is where people get off you know the spirit itself they say well it's an it it's not a, it's not a person uh, you're just being foolish the Spirit itself bears witness. Forces, energies can't bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. A cosmic force can't bear witness. He bears witness with your spirit that you're a child of God. He comes to you and the loving Spirit of God confirms to you, bear witness, confirms to you that you're a child of God. Amen. Only a person could do that. Amen. The, the, the energy, in the, like we talked about, the, the electrical socket of that can't bear witness to me that I was born. It, it can't testify that I'm born. I was born of my mom and dad. It can't, test, it can't bear witness to me that I was born in this earth. Only, the, only a person could bear witness to that. Only the Spirit of God can bear witness that we're the children of God. He bears witness with us. Can you say Amen. Look on down to verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Mm -hmm. He helps us. Mm -hmm. Amen? And he helps us with purpose. Remember, remember we talked about this morning how that in his personality, his mind, he has purpose in the things he does. Here the Spirit of God helps us. And he goes on. For we're not, we, and, and listen, he helps us in our weaknesses. Amen. This is what people do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? If you're outside doing something, the, 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 Duke, the Duke Power Energy electricity doesn't shoot out the building and go out there and help you pick something up. If you're in struggles, a person comes by and helps you. The Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For we know not how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit, look at here. The Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. He's interceding. Now, I don't care what pronoun you use there. He intercedes. People intercede. People make prayer on behest of the other, of another. Amen? A person does that. And he's a holy, divine person, but he's still a person. Amen? Just because the pronoun is, is genderless doesn't make the Holy Spirit a, a non-person. Hallelujah. Are you here? But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings, which can be not, cannot be uttered. We know, um, we know also there that that word, you know, groanings, which cannot be uttered, in, uh, uttered or uttered in articulate speech. Mm -hmm. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Again, mind. He has mind. We talked about this morning. You know, you know. I know we, we could spend a lot of time here on these things. But people get foolish. When you start seeing the Bible, the, the Word of God ascribes acts or, perform, or things that the Spirit performs that only a person can perform, then the Bible is su supporting or substantiating the, the, the position that the Spirit of God is a divine person. Yeah. Now we'll get into the, the, the not, not only is he a, he's a person, but he's a divine person, you know, with more proof that he is God. He is the, he is the third person of the Godhead. Amen. Yeah. He's a person. I would say he's a person. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. And, and, and these things we've read so far, only a person can do them. And if he's not a person, they make no sense. They can make no sense if the Spirit of God is not a person. Look over if you will to John 14. John, the 14th chapter. That is the Gospel of John. Hallelujah. Let's look back in here in um, verse 15. We'll, we'll read down some. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father. He will give you another comforter. Now again, we've said this before. We'll say it again. The word another in the Greek means one after the same manner as myself. So Jesus says, I'll send one after the same manner as myself. And he said, comforter. Now we, we've limited, oh, how we've limited the working of the Spirit in the church by simply translating parakletos uh, or parakli, and then and the, the form used here usually is, is parakletos. But to simply the translation of comforter, when it carries more meaning than that, where it means comforter, helper, teacher, strengthener, standby, advocate, amen, intercessor. He, he's, he's all things, he's those things, all those things to us. He's not limited to simply being the comforter. Thank God it's a comforter. He's also the teacher. He's also the standby. He's also the advocate. He's also the helper. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. Praise God. But Jesus said, I'll send another after the same manner as myself, another paraclete. Amen? Glory to God. That he may, that he, now Jesus, see here, the pronoun to paraclete, paraclete is, male, is, is masculine gender, therefore the pronoun that follows is, is masculine. So you can't take Romans where they use the word pneuma, which is genderless, and the pronoun itself, and build a whole doctrine on the non-person of the Holy Spirit, which people have done. Now well, Jesus said the comforter, uh, he, he will do what? Well, look right here, it says, um, that he may abide, see people abide with you forever. Now you cannot go look at Star Wars and get any revelation. Amen. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth. You see again, another act, you see an action the spirit does. He dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while the world seeth me no more, but ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. And that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and know ye in the me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. He is that loveth me. I'm going to take, now we could go off and just jump on the little grace thing right here. Yeah. Jesus said, if you love him, you'll keep his commandments. Yeah. If you love God, you're not going to want to displease him by actions that are displeasing to him. Yeah. Well, how do I know what actions are displeasing to him? You can go look in the Old Testament law and find actions that displease him. <laughs> just because we got the new covenant and he made provision so you can be empowered not to do them doesn't mean that those actions don't displease him anymore. They still displease him. It's still the moral code of God. Are you here? And so they still displease him. Stealing from your neighbor, he still dis it displeases God. You can't cover yourself and say, I'm under grace, it don't matter. It still displeases God. And Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You'll, in other words, you'll live a lifestyle that honors the Father by doing what pleases Him. Well, without faith, it's impossible to please. That's right. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And the life of faith means you live in accordance with God's laws and God's commands and God's word. You do what God wants you to do. And it takes faith to do it because you can't do it in your power. And I'll leave that alone. Amen? He that, you know, if he, he hath my commandments and keep them, he it is that loveth me. He that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. And then Judas, not Iscariot, how Lord is it that will manifest yourself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said to him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. Oh, now he's gone from commandments to words. Mm. Yeah. Well, because his word is his commandment. Right, right. If a man love me, he'll keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. Wow. I said, wow. Yeah. You got people saying that don't matter what you do, God, God loves you, he's going to do it, he's going to bless you anyway, no matter what, because you're under grace, and you know, it just, it's going to happen. And Jesus said, if you don't, if you don't love, keep his words, you don't love him. 
Amen? And, and the word which that you hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, yet being present with you. Now, Jesus said this. Oh, wait a second now. He's establishing the Jesus doctrine. Now, I said all this stuff while I was with you. But the Holy Ghost, which is, which is, I mean, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Let's see, Jesus is clarified. You can't mess it up. You can't say he was talking about something else. He said the Holy Ghost, the, the, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I've said to you. Because you've got, you got people going around saying that what Jesus taught, and I understand this, Jesus ministered under the old covenant. I do understand that. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not stupid. I, I, know enough, you know, I know enough about the Bible to understand Jesus did minister as a man anointed under the old covenant. And he said that here, he said, that I've said things to you while I was present with you. Okay, that's old covenant. That was under his old covenant ministry in preparation for the coming age of the church. Amen. We were, well, this is in the New Testament of the Bible. Man made it the New Testament of the Bible. His ministry was an Old Testament ministry. I get that. But the Old Testament ministry was, this, his ministry up until the time of the cross was to prepare for the coming of the new. And he said, these things I've spoken unto you while I was with you. Well, if you just jump off there and run off, well, see, that was for them. But then he came back and said, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he'll teach you all things and, br and bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I've said to you. Wow. So Jesus said, I'm teaching it to you now while I'm present with you, but after I, after I leave and go sit and sit down at the right hand of the Father, the Holy Ghost is coming, and he's going to remind you what I said. What does that make it? It makes it New Testament. Yeah. Amen. Because Amen. the Holy Ghost is going to remind him what he said. So when the Holy Ghost reminded him of what he said in the New Testament, it became New Testament. And Jesus said, if you keep my word, you love the Father. He didn't say if you get, what is it about people that think that they, they got, that, that they can live just under the fact that God loves them and they don't have to love God? Because see, we, we get this backwards. You know, God, yeah, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But listen, let me tell you something. He made a stipulation there in John 3. He said that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. There is an action required on the part of, the, of, of people to get in on the love of God. Somebody say amen or on me. All right. So the Holy Spirit's going to be doing reminding. Everybody say reminding. Hallelujah. That's as far as I was going with there. Uh, I read more than I had planned on reading, but that's okay. Everybody say glory. glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Look over in the Acts. Well, let's look. Let's, while we're here, let's j jump back over to 1 John chapter 20. I mean, I'm sorry. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20 and 27. I, miss, I, I said this morning, 2 and 27, but it's 20 and 27. 1 John 2, 20. But you have an unction from the Holy One and know all things... Verse 27, but the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and you need no man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, even as it is taught you, you shall abide in him. Now, if you take this out of context, you'll think that you don't need anybody teaching you anything, you just need the Holy Ghost. Right, right. See, the Holy Ghost anoints men to teach. That's right. You don't need men teaching you traditions, you don't need men teaching you out of their flesh, you need the Holy Ghost on, on the teacher, those ministering to you. And you need the Holy Ghost on you. Right. Amen. It's not talking about you don't need to eat. See, people take that run off with deep in with it. Right. Then why did he give apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, or teachers for the perfecting or maturing of the saints to, to y'all come into knowledge? See, we just can't take a scripture out and not go balance it out against the rest of the word of God. Mm -hmm. You'll get messed up. And people do it all the time. I said people do it all the time. Amen. But notice here that the Holy Spirit teaches us. Everybody said the Holy Spirit teaches us. See, he's our teacher. See, that's an act ascribed, the act ascribed to the Holy Spirit that only a person can do. Amen. He is the teacher. Whether he's teaching through a ministry gift or teach, teaching to you directly to your spirit, he's still the teacher. 
When I'm ministering, I'm ministering under the unction and anointing of the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Spirit using a human vessel to teach. But that vessel is simply yielded to the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is still doing the teaching. And somebody said, glory. glory. Hallelujah. Look back over in, in John's Gospel, the 15th chapter. The Gospel of John. Looking down in the verse 6. I'm sorry, John's Gospel, the 16th chapter. I looked at that wrong. But because I said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now think about this now. Would it be expedient for Jesus, the, the, the second person of the God, had to leave and send a force? Oh. He says, it's good for you that I go, then the Holy Spirit can come. Now, let's stop here and jump off just a little bit. Uh, one of the things that, that uh, people, because of the fallen state of man, and we're so natural driven, sense knowledge ruled. You know, Kenya calls it being sense knowledge ruled. That we, we think a person is, has a body. We want to have compliance. As, as uh, um, R.A. Torrey says in his book, Personal Work of the Holy Spirit, um, he talks about, you know, the propriety mean embodied. Just because about the Holy Spirit doesn't have arms, legs, and, and a physical body doesn't mean he's not a person. In the sense that we see, we are, there's, there are things in spiritual matters that are beyond your comprehension at this point because you don't understand them. One of the things, we'll, I mean, the Bible says something very interesting over in, for, in, in uh, John's first epistle. He said, when he shall appear, we should be as he is because we'll see him as he is. You, and we, well, we can think we got this figured out about the, the resurrected body of the glorified body of Jesus Christ. No, you don't. There are things of the spirit you ain't figured out yet. And some of them you won't figure out until you see them. And that's what he said. When we see him, we'll be as he is because we'll see him as he is. We'll be like him because we'll see him as he is. You gotta, we'll have to see it in order to step into it. That's Bible, folks. Beloved, now we're the sons of God, yet it does not appear what we shall be. But when we know that, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We're going, to walk, we're going to walk in places with God. And then when the rapture takes place for those who are remaining, we're going to go, oh! See, the ones who've already gone on have seen. They're waiting to pick the body back up. But those who are still here are going to go, oh, that's it. Boom, and step into it. But you have to see. Well, I, I, you can't have it if you've got to see it first. That's one of the things you've got to see first. I know faith. I understand the faith teaching. But, you know, this is one of the things you're going to have to see first. He had a bunch of people running around about 25 years ago teaching that we're all going to be the manifested sons of God. We're going to walk through walls, you know, all this kind of stuff. You know, you know they, were wearing, they were teaching with their back or collars, you know, getting clerical collars and wearing them. They were the kingdom now teachers. You know, manifested sons of God. No, he said that then we're not going to have that until we see him. When he appears. Not just, you know, you're not going to have a vision and see him. The mothership's not coming. You're going to look up there. He's going to appear in the sky and you're going to see him. You're going to go, whoo, that's it. Glory. And you're out of here. And about the time you're seeing him and going, glory, uh, Uncle Charlie's going to be coming up out of the ground because he came back to pick up his body, and he's going to be going, glory! glory. And everybody's going to be going, glory! Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Because we'll see it. Amen. Amen. Now, there are things in the Bible that promise us that we have to live by faith and tell us if we receive it by faith, we'll get it. There are other things you can't do a thing in the world with it. You can't change things. You can't bring Jesus back quicker than he's coming back. Yeah. He's coming back when the, Lord, when the Father says go. And you can't sit around and have a faith meeting and get him back quicker. That went over big. I know some people think they can't. Oh, we're going to bring the Lord. You can't bring the Lord back. Amen? All right. Anyway, Jesus said it was expedient for him to go so the comforter could come. Amen? The paraclete could come. He could come in and dwell you. Glory to God. Somebody say hallelujah. Twice. 
Oh, come on. I don't want to turn the lock off this thing. If I walk away, it locks up. Okay. Thank you. Look over to Acts chapter 16. We've just got a couple more that we're going to be done. Now, if we get done early on Sunday nights, don't run off and run over there and grab your youth and drag them out. Amen. <clears throat> they get about 30 hours a week of indoctrination by your school system. They need some indoctrination by the Holy Ghost in church. Amen. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 16, verse 6 and 7, the authority to command men in service to Jesus Christ. Now, when they were gone through Phygia, Gia, in the region of Galatia, they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. And they were come to Messiah, Messiah. And they were saved to go into Bithynia. But the Spirit suffered or allowed them not. Now, again, if the, per the Holy Spirit's not a person. This makes no sense. He's forbidding and allowing people to not to do things. Mm -hmm. They're on their way to do something. He forbids them. They change the direction, go somewhere else, and he doesn't allow them to go there. Now, how can, you know, we, we have to understand, only a person has the authority to command men in the service of Jesus. Only a divine person. Amen? So he's, he has a person. Everybody say, he is a person. And again, this is, this is one of these scriptures that if he's not a person, it makes no sense. Right. You, can't, you can't reconcile him as a non-person and have these scriptures in the Bible. You can't reconcile the two. I can reconcile the spirit itself just by a translator um, technique. You can't reconcile these things and call him a non-person. Look over in Acts 13 too. He also has the authority to call and appoint. Acts chapter 13. We know, we know this passage, 1 and 2. Now in the church of Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and, so, uh, and Simeon, and Simeon, who was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Man, Man, Manan, Manan. Here we go, glory to God. I think I got it out. Hallelujah. Which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, now the Holy Ghost is speaking again. But not only is he speaking, he's speaking with authority. What? He's speaking with the authority to call and appoint people to an office. The Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I've called them. Amen? And, and um, they, put, they, they fasted and prayed, laid hands on them and sent them away. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. And from thence they did sail to Cyprus. Part in Seleucia and then sail to Cyprus. Now the Holy Ghost called them, appointed them, and then sent them forth. These acts make no sense if he's not a person. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I mean, Jesus himself said, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. He gave equal authority and equal recognition of deity to the Spirit of God in that statement. Yeah. As he and the Father had. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. He is a person. Let me say this morning. And if he's a person, we don't want to grieve him. He knows your thoughts. He knows your actions. He knows what you're doing. Amen. He knows what you, he knows it. You, th you think because you turn the light out, he don't see? Hello? The Holy Ghost sees in the dark. Well, how do you know? Because he's omniscient. He knows everything. He's God. We'll get to some of those other things. Look real quick over Acts 20. Last verse for tonight. Man, I just flipped, slam into the book of 1 Corinthians. This, little, this Bible is great, but the pages are real thin. It don't take long to, to cover a bunch of the Bible. Listen to Acts 20, 28. Now remember, we, we, our point here is, he has the authority to call and appoint to an office. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves, and to the, all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. 
to feed the church of God, which he's purchased with his own blood. Now, now who, who appointed you? Jesus called me to the ministry. Actually, the Holy Ghost did. Think about it now. Here it says the Holy Ghost set you there. The Holy Ghost separated Barnabas and Saul. For the work whereunto he says, for the work whereunto I've called them. So they're being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. Take heed unto yourselves and to the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. Amen. Well, can I get a little excitement? The Holy Ghost has the power to appoint the office. Yes. Only a person can do that. Amen. So we have only acts that a person can do are ascribed to the Holy Spirit in Scripture. Amen. So eternally, the Word of God proves that the Spirit of God is a person. Yes. Amen. Now, when we get when we get past uh, th these these four proofs next week uh, on Sunday, actually, do y'all mind if I take just a few more minutes? It won't be long. Third point or third line of proof that he's a person: an office is predicated of the Holy Spirit that only can be predicated of a person. John 14, and we've already read this, but verse 16 and 17, I'll pray the Father, he'll give you another comforter. The Holy Spirit came to stand in the office that Jesus stood in while Jesus was on the earth. He came to replace him when he was resurrected and seated at the right hand of the Father. Even the Spirit of truth, whom, and he will abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. There's an office declared or predicated on the Holy Spirit that only a person can fill. Okay? And of course, it was that office. And then the fourth line of proof, that was, that was real quick. Wasn't that short? The Holy Spirit is treated in a way that only a person can be treated. Yeah. Look over in uh, Isaiah 63. We may, we're going to regress to a, a, a part, a, an aligning point from this morning. But we're not going to take a long time. I won't cover it because we want to get it next week. We're going to start talking about his deity. Uh, Isaiah chapter 63. I think, we've, I think we've probably proven he's a person. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? And so I, I want to get on to that. All right, verse 10 of chapter 63 of Isaiah. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them. Uh, only, that's what, can he, only a person can be treated. Only a person can be grieved and vexed against. Yeah. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Ooh. Lord, send the power just now. Right, anyway, praise the Lord. Get over to Hebrews. I love Hebrews 9, but Hebrews 10, 10 is where I need to be. Hebrews 10, 29. Uh, verse 26. 25. Let, and forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another as, much, as so much the more as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, after that we've received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. I do not understand why people say that you can't mess up things with God because you're under grace. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I read scriptures and I go, hey, dummy. Yeah. You're, you're, you're only reading part of it and you're, you're, you're creating a, a, a um, what's the word? I just lost that word. A narrative. A, yeah, a false narrative based on only reading part of it and re rejecting everything else because it doesn't fit your narrative. You just can't get rid of the other stuff in the Bible if it doesn't go along with your narrative. You've got to change your narrative. But a certain, you know, there remains no more sacrifice for sin, but a, a certain fearful looking for a judgment and a fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. How, of how much more sore punishment suppose ye shall, ye shall he be that thought, um, be thought worthy who's trodden underfoot the Son of God hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the spirit of grace. The Holy Spirit's the spirit of grace. The word despite here means insult. Yeah. He who has insulted the spirit of grace. Yeah. I don't want to be the one insulting the Holy Ghost. Amen. Acts chapter 5. There's only two more verses then I'll, then we'll, we'll finish it. Next week we'll pick up with the deity of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 5. Some of this on the front end we had to be a little heavier on because we wanted to, we wanted to get to the fact 
He is a person. And to get us thinking along those lines once again. Acts 5.1, but a certain man named Ananias, Ananias, back up to the previous chapter. Verse uh, 34, neither was any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and bought the prices of the things that were sold, laid them at the apostles' feet. Distribution was made unto every man according to, to he had need. And Joseph, who was by the apostles, was surnamed uh, Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land sold it, brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now you understand, this was a very desperate and difficult time. If you became a Christian, you lost everything. You lost your inheritance, you lost everything. It doesn't mean communism is the right way to go. This wasn't communism. This was the necessity to survive in the, in the circumstances they were living in. All right? But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and uh, brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. And they were, they were uh, trying to act like, see, if they just came and said, look, we sold it, we kept some of it, we're giving this to the church, it would have been fine. They came to look like they were doing like everybody else, giving everything, and so they were lying. Amen? Yeah. And Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to me? He said, to lie to the Holy Ghost. And keep back part of the price of the land where you were, while it remained. It was it not your own. After it was sold, was it not in your power? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied unto men, but unto God. Wow. When two, in these two verses, he went from just not only lying to our Holy Ghost, he called him God. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Ananias heard these words, fell down, gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all of them and heard these things. Young men arose, wound him up, carried him out, and buried him. But in the space of three hours, uh, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in, Peter said, did you sell the land for this much? She said, yep. And Peter said, how is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? So he can be lied to and he can be tempted. Amen. Behold, the feet of them which buried your husband are at the door. They're going to carry you out. And she fell down straightway at his feet, yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in, found her dead, carried her forth, and uh, buried her by her husband. And great fear. Boy, I'll tell you what. I said, I'll tell you what. Now, I, I was sitting in a meeting back in 1982, three, and Dr. Summerall was ministering at Rama, at, a, at a, um, an alumni week at Rama, and he said this statement. He said, before the Lord returns, the day of Ananias and Sapphira will return to the church. Oh my. Uh -oh. Yeah. I, I sat right there and heard him say it. Oh my. Why? Because God's got to clean the church up. We can't have all this junk going on in the church. And all these games being played in the church and people being paying the price. Notice what here. When, when they lied, had it not been dealt with, it would have brought something into the church that would have been detrimental to the church. So you didn't lie to God. You didn't lie to man. You lied to God. Boom. I ain't never done this before in my life. We've never had a meeting like this before in our life. Let's take up a big offering. You know, uh, and, and, and uh, merchandising the anointing. Now, people have been getting away with that and living lasciviously off of it, but I'm going to tell you there's going to be some Ananias and Sapphire events, and that's going to stop that mess. Because great fear will come on the church. Amen? Hallelujah. And then Matthew chapter 12. So he can be rebelled, rebelled against, grieved, despited, insulted, lied to. But Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven of men. Whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven, neither in this world or in that to come. Now that's some pretty bold wording. And people have tried and tried and tried to, to work around that. You can't work around it. knowingly and purposefully attributing works of the Spirit of God to the devil. Ouch. You know, ministers, you need to be smart. If you don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit or, or the workings of the Spirit, just shut up. Yeah. It's for your own safety. Just shut up. Now, if people say stuff in ignorance, that's one thing. That's, you know, but, but to knowingly do something. 
There are people, there are people who've walked with God, been in the Spirit, and walked with the Holy Ghost and, and ministered under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and come back out later and get so deceived, they start, they start saying, that's not God, there's no such thing as that, you know, whatever. They become the poster child for the apologist against the things of the Spirit. I wouldn't, I, you just better just shut up and go off and retire somewhere. Amen? All right. And y'all enjoy that? First line of proof? Amen? Personality? Second line of proof? Uh, acts ascribed to, a, to the Holy Spirit can only be performed by a person. Thirdly, office predicated uh, to the Holy Spirit can only be filled by a person. And then fourth, uh, you can, there are things that you can do against the Spirit that only can do against a person. Okay? So the Holy Spirit is what? He is a person. Next week we start on the deity of the Spirit. I know we've got kind of crossed some, you, you know, some things you just can't cover without crossing lines with your points. There's no way to keep them totally separate. That's just, it's impossible. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, PO Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.